people don't have, uh, they have cash and credit, but they don't, they're not on the job long enough. Like they, they just got a new job and they just started and they can't. We've had some where it's like a contractor that hasn't reported his income. He makes money, he just hasn't reported it. So we slap him around a little bit and say, show your income for two years and then you can qualify and you can buy this house. But what, what they don't do is they don't gripe about the price. You can charge sell a house for 10% more than the, a regular, you know, a, a non rent owned person would buy it for. And, um, and they're not going to gripe because the real estate agents aren't going to show them anything. They're not going to show them the house next door. They're not, a real estate agent's going to try to pre qualify them and say, sorry, you can't qualify. I'm not going to take you around in my car and, and you know, waste my gas showing you places you can't buy. So then you rent to own and you're only dealing with 15% of the population that you know, maybe uh, you're dealing with a percentage of the population that the agents won't take in their cars. So now you, you say, I'll, I'll take a chance with you as long as you have some cash to put down. And I will usually, you know, 8%, 10%, those are pretty good numbers, 8 to 10% down. And, they, and you take a risk with them. You say, look, you, don't, you, you have the option to buy the house. If you don't buy it, your money's not refundable. So I'm willing to take a chance with you. Or are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you, you know, Sure. Because if you are you sure you're going to go through with it? Because you, I want people who are serious. If you're not serious, don't don't put the money down because you lose it. So if you're serious, put the money down and you do rent to own. And they say no, 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 I'm serious, I'm serious. And they put the money down, and then you do rent to own with them, and you can help them out as much as they want help. You can try to get them qualified for a mortgage. I like to do that where I've owned them. We talked about short-term capital gains on Benino this year and long-term capital gains. When I do a rent to own with somebody, I make sure that I've owned the property for a year the first day that they have the right to buy it. So let's say I bought the property in January, I didn't get it rented until March, you know, I'll give them the right to buy it the following January so that, that I've owned it a year. It doesn't matter when they moved in. Now, in that case of um, doing it subject to and then turning around and, you know, doing it um, owner finance. Rent to, uh, well, we rent to own. Yeah. Um, you know, would you say it'd be better to put that uh, eight to ten percent down um, directly on to the principal no. to, to pay it down, or would you? Is that more like money in your pocket? Money in your pocket. That's good. Okay. No, you don't pay that on principal because then it doesn't. Be okay. How 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 many people here have paid pay down their house faster than the actual amortization? You've done that. Okay. I will. I will say that people do it because they want peace of mind. Um, but if you're paying down your house, let's say you have a 4% interest loan, when, by paying down your, people say, well, if I pay it down, instead of 30 years, I'm gonna pay it off in 20 years, which is true, but you're also investing your money at the rate of whatever your mortgage is. So if you have a 4% interest loan in your home and you pay an extra $1,000 of principal, you just invested $1,000 at 4%. Now, if 4% is, your definition of a decent rate of return, then that's fine. And maybe for Joe six pack, you know, that's fine. But if you know how to find investment deals, you know what to do with your money, you can make better than a 4% return. You can make much better than a 4% return. So I tell people, don't pay your loan down, take the money and set it aside and wait till you have enough that you can then put a down payment on another rental property and, and, and leverage that. Or, you know, Get extra. I mean, I, I actually did it where I, I had a line of credit and I would actually borrow money off of my line of credit at 5% and I lend it out at 12% and I would make a 7% spread on the bank's money. They do it to us. Why not make a spread on them? <laughs> but Jeremy, I paid in advance because the guy I got the subject to from yeah. but I had to pay the mortgage off for two years. No, you paid in advance for two years. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, my whole point is, let's say you have a... You don't know anybody who would have done a deal like that, would you? <laughs> you have, yeah. You have a 30 year. It'll be paid off in a year, Phil. You have a 30 year amortization, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna invest your money. Well, short of refinancing it, once you pay down your your the principal, the, the loan payment doesn't change. It'd be nice if it did. Right, that's what we have Now, I think it makes sense if your interest rate is higher. If your interest rate is higher, it, then, well, then as long as your interest rate, interest rate, if your interest rate, you have to know. So this, is, this goes back to an important lesson that I didn't learn in school, that they don't teach in school, that they should, and that's the time value of money. The time value of money is a number. That number is a personal number for you. Everybody has a time value of money, and, and, and you have to define what that is. The, 
I might say that mine is 10, but, but then again, it's probably 12. At some, at some rate, at some rate of interest, you're a borrower. At some other rate, at some other rate of interest, you're a lender. And, and that number, if you can define what that is, that's your time value of money. So um, if somebody has a deal and say, look, you can make you know, 6% on this deal, 6% is great. I'm saying, well, no, I'm not interested in making 6%, but if you think 6% is great, why don't you become a lender on one of my deals? And I'll pay you six. If somebody comes to me and says, oh, man, I have this deal, and you know, it's got a 16% uh, return. I'm like, hold on a second, <laughs> let me see what money I have. 16% return is great. So at some level, 16 is something where I'm a lender, at six, I'm a borrower, so maybe the number's 10, maybe it's 12, I don't know, whatever, it's a personal decision, because it's like, okay, if I, if I had the money, what could I do with it? And you have all your choices, and if, you're, if, if all the choices, the best thing you do with it is 10%, that's the best you can do with it, then 10's your number. If the best thing you can do with your money is 6%, then six is your number. And like Terry said, if you had a, if 6% is your time value money, and you have a, a, a loan in your house that's at 8%, then paying it down is a good idea, because otherwise the best you can do with it is six. Um, if credit cards, credit cards have a pretty high interest payment. So before you go paying down the principal on your house, pay down your credit cards that are at a higher rate. You know? so, so that's kind of how you have to think about the time value money.